Readings for nerds. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek reading recommendations. Uh, today, I am going to be doing a video that I, I mean, it's not like anything I've done before, but essentially, I'm going to be going over a lot of the, the books that I've read recently. These are more of the recent ones that I've had. I uh, sold and gave away a whole bunch of the ones before when I moved from Alaska and kept some of them, but gave away a lot of them. So the ones that I've got here are essentially what I've been reading since I moved to Savannah about two and a half years ago. Um, I read a lot. I also have a bunch that I've done on Audible, um, and it, it I, I really I really like the Black Library content. What can I say? And if any of you have read my article on Warmer Community, you know that I gave my top five recommendations for reading during uh, this whole situation, and uh, I'm going to continue with it because there's something about reading and getting lost in the lore, uh, and 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 seeing that lets you lets you escape from whatever's going on right now and. Get your brain elsewhere. So uh, I'm going to go over, I'm going to kind of go over all these books that I have in front of me and just kind of give my thoughts on them and the and the series that they're part of and just give me a recommendation, tell you a little bit about what they're about. And it really just kind of give you a sense of, of what's happening with them so that you can go out and find the book that really appeals to you so you can enjoy yourself getting into the Black Library novels and everything like that that I have. Uh, because I thoroughly enjoy reading these. I, I It started out when I first started doing the, the actual board game more consistently when I was in Alaska. Um, I used to read a lot anyway. I used to read a bunch of, of sci-fi novels, a bunch of, of fantasy novels. Um, I liked a lot more of the, 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 the high sci-fi, the, the, the sci-fi novels, or low sci-fi. So, like Modern Day with magic in them, so the Dresden Files and things like that. Um, I also liked um, uh, Altered Carbon, this, this, the, the trilogy that that is based off of the, the Netflix series, the trilogy of books that's based off. This is fantastic. Highly recommend. But more specifically, once I started uh, getting involved in Warhammer, I knew there was a lot of lore. I started to pick up a few of the books to see what they were like and really, really loved them and really got into them. And that has been exclusively what I've been reading and consuming essentially for the last couple of years. So I wanted to kind of go over what I've read here, and I've got a big old pile of books that I just put here uh, that we can go over and talk about, and we can get an idea of what they're about if you have a certain thing that you're interested in that might direct you to what you want to read and what you've uh, consumed. So uh, let's start here with this big old pile. Uh, this here is all of the uh, the Caiaphas Cain novels. <laughs> Um, I really, really enjoyed these. Uh, they follow along with uh, with Commissar Kane as he. It's basically his memoirs uh, talking about uh, what he uh, wanted, what he what he felt was his history. So it's basically him writing his memoirs, but they've been redacted by the Inquisition because of the fact that they were they told too truthful of a tale. Because he became a hero of the Imperium and he never felt like he was a hero. He felt like he was just trying to live. And he just lucked into becoming the hero because of that. But I think that they're they're just hilarious. His, his the sense of humor when he's talking, the humor that's imparted because it's also written with footnotes and interjections and and other portions uh, from the Inquisitor that's reading it, uh, Amberly Vale, and she is also a part of the the series too. She's she's one of the characters in the series, not just the person giving you the uh, the annotated version of it. Uh, and it's it's really funny. It's really entertaining. It's really exciting. Uh, it really captures you. The characterization, the, how they built the characters in this is just fantastic, fantastic. Um, Sandy Mitchell does a, a really great job of that, and I think it's an incredible read and well worth giving a shot uh, if you're interested in anything Warhammer. This is a good place to start as well because it kind of goes over, and you have interactions with with a lot of the Xenos. You have interactions with Space Marines, with the Imperial, a lot of Imperial Guard, obviously, because he's a Commissar. Um, and it really just gives you a good sense while being entertaining reads. So if you're just starting off with Black Library and you have no idea what you want to do, uh, I would recommend these ones because they're really good. I know there's a lot of them, it looks like, but there's uh, they're conveniently captured in three different uh, omnibuses with three books each, I think. And then this is uh, the latest one that just came out, the 10th one. Um, and I, because I caught up on it on the, on the uh, anthologies and now, now I'm buying the ones on the regular ones. So really, really good. Um, highly recommend Comments Arcane. Go for it. Um, 
I think they 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 they're the Caiaphas Cain novels, and it's a defender of the Imperium, savior of the Imperium, and I think uh, and hero of the Imperium. I can't remember which order those came in. You can easily find out, um, but it's they're really good, really really good. So give them a shot. Uh, let's go randomly here. Voice of Mars by David Geimer. Uh, this book goes over the actions of the Iron. Um, the um, uh, oh, goes over with the iron, uh, the iron hands, and goes into a lot of how they operate and how they work, which is really interesting. Um, it's it's dealing with a um, a conspiracy or something that's going on within the the, the political world of of the uh, of the iron hands, uh, trying to find out some uh, information, and it's really really good. Highly recommend this one too. Uh, it's really it's a it's a interesting take on it because. A lot of, I think, what people know about the Iron Hands is that they're just really good on the tabletop right now. <laughs> uh, but this book really goes into the depth of what makes them uh, an interesting chapter to talk about, an interesting chapter to know about, and really uh, really makes you understand kind of how they operate and how it works, uh, going about how the flesh is weak. I really like this one. Um, give it. I, I mean, I like all of them. So if, if you're tired of me, I'm not going to be uh, probably ripping into any of them because I really enjoy... I, I don't think I've read a single novel that I didn't enjoy. Uh, to be honest, um, I really, really like what they are, and you have to take them for what they're worth. You know what I mean? I, I don't think, honestly, I don't think any of these novels are going to be, um, are, are, you know, are William Shakespeare. Although I hated William Shakespeare, <laughs> so maybe they're better than William Shakespeare in my opinion. Uh, but the, you know, I don't think they're going to be uh, play. They're going to be uh, in a classics uh, section of of, of of future library, but. I do think that they are extremely entertaining, especially if you like Warhammer 40k. Um, but even if not, I just think that they're they're interesting novels. A good way to get into the lore. So, uh, but the Voice of Mars, good, if, especially if you like uh, Space Marines. It's not so much, uh, it's not as much bolter porn as some of the other ones that they have here, um, or as some of the other books that there are out there. Um, this one is definitely more of a um, an actual. There's a lot more to it than just the battles. Uh, there's some that are just battle books, um, and I think I've got, there's at least one in here, I think that is just a Space Marine battle book, um, and this one is not. This one is actually a story that's driven. I think there are others in the series, if I'm not mistaken, with this one, uh, which might be worth checking out and making sure, because I think I may have picked up one that was not the first of the series. <laughs> but either which way, I still enjoyed it, So, but if you really want to get into them, if you really like the Iron Hands, it might be worth checking out uh, in the particular order. Um, let's kind of go these ones. Oh, yes. So, the Gaunt's Ghost Books. If you read my article on um, Warhammer Community, you know that I severely rate the Gaunt's Ghost novels. Uh, they are really fantastic reads, uh, really interesting, and you really, really feel for the characters of the Tanith first and only. Um, definitely give them, a, give them a read, especially if you're, if you're interested in, um, in Imperial Guard or anything like that. These guys are, this is a really a strong series to get into. There's a lot of them, but it's a really strong read. To get into, so um, these are this is actually six and seven. I gave the other uh, five I had left in Alaska with a friend, um, and actually I think I stopped reading them at this because when I first moved here I was trying to get my feet back underneath me, and I stopped reading them. And then I picked up some other novels because I couldn't find the next one in the series. Uh, so then, uh, but just recently I picked up because uh, I'm going to get into actually I'm currently reading this book which we'll get into in a second. But um, essentially I am going to be the next one i'm going to be reading is picking back up with these series i, I got the lost omnibus because now they come in omnibuses which is pretty fantastic so um i picked up the lost omnibus and the one after that which is the f one right before the war master the latest one that came out the newest one so this one's uh this is the last two omnibuses before it, it really catches back up with where they're at now so awesome awesome novels I really like them um there is a lot of action in them there's a lot of intrigue in them there's a lot of uh a lot of uh, fun characterization, and, and you really feel for these characters. You really develop uh, a f feelings for these for these characters, and you really want them to do well and 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 have a good life. And sometimes it doesn't always happen that way, and it leaves you in tears uh, if you've uh, if, you, if you spoiled yourself on the um, on, on my latest uh, top five. You'll know some of those stories that leave you with tears in your eyes. But there, it's a really fantastic read. I highly recommend these ones as well. Then we have Shield of the Emperor. It's another omnibus. GW's been putting out a lot of omnibuses, be omnibuses because they have a lot of novels that uh, kind of went out of print, and now they're bringing them back to allow you to read. Um, and they're bringing them together with a lot of other short stories because there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of 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 things that have been written 
uh, for the World of Warhammer 40,000. And they're trying to put them out there in places that you can get them. So, The Shield of the Emperor is uh, Astromel Tarm Stories. Uh, there's a couple novels in here. There's 15 Hours, Death World, and Rebel Winter. And then they've each got some short stories associated with them. Uh, 15 Hours is the one that everyone, you know, quotes when they talk about that, where... Uh, your the average lifespan of a, of an Astra Militarum soldier is 15 hours after they uh, make landing on their first planet, uh, and it kind of goes over the story. This is the this is the story where that comes from, um, which is really fantastic. Uh, I really like the stories. They really give you an idea of what it's like to be uh, an Astra Militarum soldier. Uh, the same thing with these ones, but the, this also gets into a little bit more. So you've got the Catachans in there. You've got a whole bunch of different ones, and it's a uh, really exciting and interesting about you know soldiers that are just locked in these endless wars that just keep going on and that there there's seemingly no way to win but there's no way that they're going to just let it be a loss and the fact that um all these different things that happen when you're trying to operate a war machine the size of the imperial guard and how big and the mechanics and all the different things that happen and how planets get lost and forgotten and wars continue to happen regardless of what they want to happen and all the mistakes that can go on. It's really, really super interesting. It makes it really kind of a personal uh, story about how all these things uh, happen. And it's, I really like this one. I like them. It was good. And it's also a bunch of different novels, which is nice. So if uh, you don't feel like getting into a big <coughs> series, that's these are these are always usually pretty good ones to pick up because you get to just read what is there and 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 move on from there. Um, some of the omnibuses actually have stories books that end up becoming series and I'll, I'll tell you kind of some of the ones there when we get into them but they're they're good so this is the one i'm currently working on uh wings of blood is one of the newer ones uh it's basically an anthology of uh of planes <laughs> all different all different flight stuff so it's a bunch of different things they've got uh eldar flight so far that i've read i've got, I've, I've got eldar space marine they've had imperial guard uh, in different places and it's super uh su super interesting it's not something that i thought I would be interested in honestly and it, I hadn't picked this up for a long time because of it um, I didn't think of myself as like a, a, a flight kind of guy uh, but another book that will go in here Double Eagle um, by Dan Abnett uh, made me want to read more <laughs> that's what really got me into it and wanting to do it uh, and uh, after reading that I wanted more so I picked up this novel uh, this this anthology here and it's good it's really good I like it so far really cool stories there's some that are, you know, really heartfelt and really get an understanding of what goes on uh, with the Imperial Navy and the Astra Militarum flyers and the Space Marine flyers, what it's like to be there. Because, I, honestly, I think that the flyers, uh, just the, the, the story and the thought behind them and the lore kind of get lost a lot in, in a lot of the other stories that get told. They're just kind of coming in to support, to do what they do, and then they fly away and never to be told about again. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see all that work. Uh, it also gives you an idea of, of how you know some of the Xenos ones work too. So there's one that actually takes place from the perspective of the Eldar at least. Uh, and then there's another one that um, there's one that's uh, between the Space Wolves and the Dark Eldar, which is kind of interesting. And there's even there's a lot of the orcs as um, the orcs uh, as uh, what am I call it? What's the word I'm looking for? As the enemy in these. So you get an idea of how the orc flyers work and what it's like to face off against them and what they do. You don't really, I don't, they, so far I haven't finished it. So there might be a story in here from the orc perspective, a short story, but uh, not that I know of as of yet. So, uh, but interesting, good read, especially if you like flying stuff. And if you don't like flying stuff, give it a shot. Cause I was pleasantly surprised when I picked it up and started reading it. Um, but I would start with Double Eagle if I wasn't you. So I'm going to talk about that. Let me as well talk about that one now, uh, just because it kind of associates with this, but Double Eagle um, tells the story about, uh, it's, 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 loosely associated with the uh the gaunt's ghost series um and they do have some tie-ins that you can that you that you can pick up um just like some name drops and places and whatever's going on uh but essentially it uh goes along with the uh the fantine uh double x uh squads and they're they're flying out with their um with the flight stuff and just them fighting off uh, a chaos uh incursion on a, on a planet of, of an invasion there and it's just really, really interesting. Super interesting. Um, and you really, they, I mean, Dan, Dan Abnett's fantastic. And does a great job of, um, does a great job of really hooking in, hooking you in and, and making you feel for the characters in his book. Uh, and this does a fantastic job of it. And I was, I never thought it. Honestly, I didn't even pick up this book for a long time because I was like, oh, I love Dan Abnett, but I'm not a big, you know, airplane flying guy. I just want to see, you know, I want to think about the, the, the boots on the ground, the grunts on the ground. Uh, but to have this, to after reading this, I became hooked. That's why I picked up 
that anthology. And I really like the anthology as well. So on Wings of Blood and Double Eagle. But I would pick up Double Eagle, start with that one. It's a Sabbath World novel. So it's again, that's that's the Sabbath World is what the Gaunt's Ghost is from. But I really highly recommend this one. Um, and you never know. You might become a fan of the Flyboys as well. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Requiem Infernal. Uh, this is a book uh, ostensibly about the Sisters of Battle. Uh, but it's not like a battle book. Um, it's a creepy book. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of creepy stuff going on with this. Uh, it's dealing with um, a, a, a demonic rituals that go on and trying to hunt down uh, a, a possible corruption from chaos and all of these different things. It's really, really interesting. It was a, it was a really fantastic read. Uh, deals with again, like I said, the the sisters of battle, but not as as just like um, battle sisters. So they're not just like fighting off uh, the enemy with bolter and, and chainsword. Um, although there is there are battles in here, and there are they are have sisters fighting. A lot of this is uh, a lot of intrigue and a lot of, uh, of of weird psychological kind of stuff. And I really liked it. It was very different from a lot of the other um, there. So Peter. Uh, Fehrbari did a fantastic job. I liked it a lot, um, but it was it was it was a bit weird. So uh, if you're looking for a more of a typical um, a typical uh, Black Library read, this may not be the one you're looking for. But uh, if you're not looking for a typical read, if you if you prefer like psychological horrors, you like the horror books or something like that, and you want a, a, a way to get into reading kind of the Black Library style with that kind of of, of story. Then this might be the one for you. It's good. I liked it. Um, it was. I, I like. If you, as you'll see, I pick up a lot of books that deal with aspects of the 40k lore that I don't usually play on the battlefield. I've read all of. Don't get me wrong. I've read all of the the Dark Angels books. Love them. But um, this, I think, is is kind of interesting to pick up a book. So that way you don't have to buy the whole army to start them up and read and you know and to to get an idea of what they're about. You just have to pick up a book, read it, and you get a, a, a good idea, and it fleshes out the whole universe and world as you go along. But I, highly, I like this one, uh, but it, like I said, very different, but very kind of cool. Um, let's go here. Death Watch Omnibus. This thing is a beast, uh, but it's got a, a couple full novels. It's got a lot of short stories in here, all about the Death Watch, all about them and, and their operations. Uh, there's a couple ongoing stories in here from a couple of the writers. There's some standalone short stories. Um, there's one in here by um, uh, Steve Parker. It's called Death Watch, uh, which actually has a sequel that just came out, Shadowbreaker. Uh, I listened to that one on Audible. Really liked it in here and really liked it on in the, the, the second book that came out. That's a cool one. I'm excited. I mean, they left it off where there's going to be a third one or should be or could be a third one. I guess I don't know if they will definitely make it, but there could be a third one and... Uh, I'm interested in reading that because they do a lot. Of, they do a lot of series. They do a lot of trilogies. They do a lot of series. They do contained narrative stories along multiple books um, because I mean, there's a lot to tell, and that's kind of the reality of the the Warhammer 40k universe is that it's continuously going and expanding, and there's stories at every corner, and that's why you can make your own with your own chapters. You can make your own with your own uh, models on the table. Uh, but they do a lot of it too with their own novels that they write. So, uh, but if you like the Death Watch, if you have an interest in the Death Watch, um, this is a really good book. It's kind of cool. I feel like, especially in the lore, the Death Watch Space Marines are what you feel like Space Marines should be. So they're the elite of the elite. They go in and, and just like kick butt, take names, and then just move on, which is kind of cool. And it's kind of the idea that you see them because. You don't see space marines aren't you know aren't the peacekeepers like you don't see them on planets to keep the peace. That's what the Astra Militarum is for. That's what the Arbitus are for. Space marines are there if there's a major problem to come in, fix that problem, and then leave the rest of it to everyone else because <laughs> that's what space marines do best. Um, and they don't always work in chapter strength. So you know, seeing it in Death Watch is, is fantastic because it's the best of the best that have been sequ uh, that have been uh, seconded to the Death Watch to go out. And specifically hunt down the alien, which is really fun and exciting. So, uh, good read. Uh, this probably has a lot more, you know, the bolter porn in it than uh, some of the other books. But um, you still have a lot of cool characterization, especially in Death Watch and some of the other ongoing uh, series ones that they have in here. But uh, it's kind of cool. And it also really gets into a lot of the struggles that go on with Space Marines in the Death Watch. It gives them an idea of what it's like to come from your chapter to know that you can't share what's going on here with the rest of your chapter, 
that there are secrets that you're going to be told that your that your other battle brothers that you have sworn to for life are not going to be privy to, and that you are now fighting not for uh, your your battle brother, you're fighting for your kill team brother, and you're fighting for the Imperium as a whole as opposed to this, and having to take orders from Inquisitors. Um, and not having as much of uh, the freedom that I think Space Marine chapters have, they're a lot more beholden to the Inquisition and what their whims are than necessarily what they think is best. So it's kind of interesting to see how that all works and see the difference between Death Watch and regular Space Marines as well. So good read. I like this one. Um, uh, so then you have the Carcharodon's Red Tithe. Uh, I think there was another, this is, I think, a bit of a series on these ones, Kerkerdon books. Uh, it, it deals with them and the, um, it deals with them and the uh, Night Lords. It's really kind of a really, really cool book. Uh, creepy kind of book too. Uh, pretty gory, but it goes around, uh, like you get a better idea of what the Kerkerdon's about. And they're kind of a cool chapter, a very uh, enigmatic chapter. Uh, with, uh, not a whole lot that people really in the rest, general Imperium know about them. And it goes off there. It's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting even in just that, uh, but then trying to deal with all the ramifications of what their existence means to the Imperium and what their existence means to them and how they go about it. It's uh, it's a cool one. I like this one. Uh, this one has uh, probably, it's by Robbie McNeven. I should have probably read more of the authors. I'll try to remember that. Um, but uh, it does have a lot of uh, the ultra violence, as you'll, you'll see. Uh, but it, it's it's kind of cool, and it shows them uh, arriving on a place that looking for uh, something that the chapter needs, which is because they can't really uh, recruit as easily as a lot of the other chapters. They for, they're forced to kind of take theirs from where they can, and you'll see about it. So it's a good book. I really I like this one. Uh, oh, the Magus, the Eisenhorn series. Um, as you saw in my not in my article, highly recommend the Eisenhorn series. Um, this is the latest or last one in the series. Um, so it's the, 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 and definitive case book. So it has a lot of other, it has some short stories in here as well. Um, but it is, it is real good. I liked it. I liked the whole series. Uh, just a lot more. It follows the Inquisition, obviously, Inquisitor Eisenhorn. Um, you get a really good sense of what the Inquisition is like, what they do and what they have to do and what they can't do. Uh, their, their struggles to, cause you know, when they talk about power corrupts and absolute power corrupts, absolutely. The Inquisition are essentially the most powerful people in the galaxy, uh, save the actual High Lords of Terra. They're allowed to do essentially anything that they think is necessary to protect the Imperium. They they work with the the voice of the Emperor uh, to be able to to protect the Imperium from uh, whatever specific threat that they deem necessary. So each Inquisitor is free to go hunt down who they think is is necessary to to expose the forces of chaos to expose the um the whatever else it is that's that's what they do is they go out and they hunt these these uh beasts down and they hunt down these uh cultists and these people and it's uh it's it, the the eisenhorn series does it in a fantastic way there was another uh, offshoot from the eisenhorn series the ravener series which was i almost like the ravener series better i listened to that one on audible and i really liked that one it was really really good um, again, all of it by Dan Abnett, and he's just a really fantastic writer and does a great job of characterization, which is really, really cool. Um, but I highly recommend that one. Um, and if you if you do like these, uh, I mean, definitely read the Ravener series as well, because those are really good. So there's a whole lot of books that you could read if you want to get into this and read about the Inquisition. And they have always, they have interactions with, with everyone across the Imperium, all the different forces, uh, which is kind of cool. And there's a lot of twists and turns and uh, deception and everything, and it's really, really fun, and it's just kind of cool to see the kind of threats that they face, both external and internal, as the Inquisition tries to fight to keep the Imperium around. Um, and along those lines, I'm actually going to... Where is it? Here it is. If you like the uh, the Eisenhorn, uh, the Ravener series, but you want a little bit of a... I, I would read the Ravener series before you read this next book. Uh, just because when I was, uh, so this is by Aaron Dempsey about, him, about him, The Emperor's Gift. It's a fantastic book, um, and it's about the um, the Grey Knights, and all about their actions. Uh, it deals with their actions with the uh, Space Wolves as well, and the Inquisition, 
and a demonic incursion on a planet with the Space Wolves and Imperial Guard. Uh, it's a thoroughly enter a thoroughly good book. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, and it did a great job of kind of following and understanding what the what the Grey Knights are about. Uh, I mean, they're a very enigmatic chapter. A lot of people don't know about them. And there's a lot of... Uh, it's kind of cool to see how they work and how they operate and what, how, what they operate as uh, in their, in their actions. Uh, and there was a little bit of a, um, a, a little bit of a, a drop in, in the book that just had me, um, blew my mind because I had just, I had just read, uh, the Ravener series and it was like a little bit of an Easter egg in there, which was fantastic. I'm not going to spoil it in the slightest by, by telling you that it's, uh, it's a fantastic book with, uh, with that really mind blowing Easter egg. <laughs> But if you're interested in knowing how they were operating, just kind of seeing uh, the the kind of uh, internal uh, strife and struggle that you get. So you know all the people that are are up in arms about that that short story about the about the uh, the, the Adeptus Custodes and and the the Gray Shields, the Primaris Space Marines, and how that's like an awful thing. How could they do this? Um, they do it all the time. <laughs> they do it all the time. So uh, yeah, check out check out the Emperor's Gift and get a better understanding of, of what may have been occurring there and the kind of uh, and the kind of internal politics that that happen literally all the time in the Imperium. And uh, I think that this this book is is great if you're looking for action. It's great if you're looking for an idea of, of how the uh, about how the Grey Knights work. And if you're looking for a, a good book to read about kind of all the internal strife and struggle that occurs within the Imperium itself, uh, I highly recommend this one too. So, uh, but yeah, perhaps if you read Ravener, the Ravener series before you read this one, it's a good idea just because, uh, like I said, the Easter egg will have zero effect on you uh, that way. It'll have a bigger effect if you've read the Ravener series before. Otherwise, you're, you're really not going to pick it up. So, um, but yeah, good one there. Um, what else we got? All right, so we're gonna go over this one here. So we've got uh, Severina Rain, um, but the the Honor Bound by Severina Rain novels, because obviously they're setting up for doing a whole series of these, like they did with Caiaphas Kane. Uh, these are less, it's less, it's not, it's not funny. I mean, it's not, it's not a laughing book by Rachel Harrison, but it's a really good book. It really gives you a good idea of, um, again, like on boots on the ground kind of uh, Astra Militarum. Uh, it deals with uh, scions within a within a like within a regiment deals with a lot of different stuff, a lot of intrigue, a lot of um, uh, in, in, uh, in, a lot of intrigue, which is really kind of interesting. Shows what happens when, um, you know, the the commissars are meant to be apart and above from the, the, from the Astra Militarum. And to see them try to operate within the bounds of the Astra Militarum and above it and beside it and all around it to really try to do and do what's best for whoop, do what's best for uh for the emperor do what's best for the imperium uh and be truthful and fight back against the untruths that that would happen it's super interesting super uh super uh good characters that were developed in it i really liked the story that was going along with it and uh the intrigue really kept me gripped i was i really wanted to know what was happening so this was a real page turner so highly recommend it honor bound uh the severina rain novel so Give that one a shot. Um, we also have Cadian Honor, which is uh, another. It's a novel uh, which follows a Cadian regiment that's got uh, that's been dispatched to a planet to go handle uh, a situation, or they've been sent to just go. Uh, they, they they were sent there to rest basically after having um, a major, uh, major dealing with a major um, uh, incursion on a planet. Uh, this takes place after the fall of Cadia, and it deals with a lot of their feelings as Cadians with uh, now being uh, planetless and what it means to be a Cadian after that, um, which is really kind of cool. Uh, what do you know? What do you do when your when your planet's gone? Like the Tanith first and only, uh, except these guys have a long history of fighting for their planet and their planet being the stalwart defender, like the 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 line between the Imperium and the Eye of Terror, and now it's gone. And what do you do with that? How do you move above it? How do you rise above it? How do you keep going? Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see that. And it was a really good story. I liked it a lot that they had going on with it. Um, and it's just kind of cool to see to see that kind of stuff. So I do recommend this one as well. I mean, I, mean, I recommend literally any book, any of these novels that you're going to see. 
I recommend picking up if it piques your fancy. You will not be disappointed by them. I mean, you may. You're probably a bit more uh, discerning than I am. I just really like the novels and I really like the stories that they tell. So, uh, but I do do like this one by um, by Justin D. Hill. I like him. He did some of the stories in the uh, in the the Death Watch Omnibus too. I think he has, some of his were some of the ongoing stories in that one too. Really good stuff. Um, then we have the Forges of Mars. This was a cool series. Um, this was also by, this is by Graham McNeil, um, and essentially it deals with a Magos going on an exploration uh, exploration crusade, essentially into the uh, into the very uh, the very edges of the Imperium of, of 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 explored space to go hunt down a lost explorator uh, uh, fleet uh, that was that was lost to time and what was going on uh, and just kind of the intrigues of that. It deals with space marines that are going with them, with uh, rogue traders, with the whole the whole kit and caboodle that goes along with a uh, an exploratory fleet uh, going off into the the very extremes of of, of of the known galaxy to go find more information because that's what the that's what those those cog boys do. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see how that all operates and see the decision that gets made made and uh, the interactions between forces that. Um, that have dedicated themselves to a to a to a mission, um, but that in and of themselves answer to no one. So, who tells a, a you know who tells a a rogue trader what to do other than a rogue trader? You know, there's no real authority there. Or even that, what does uh, what does a um, a Magos? How does a Magos uh, Arc Magos tell uh, Space Marines what to do when Space Marines are going to just do what they want? You've got Titans involved. Um, you've got everything. It's really, really cool. Um, it gives you the whole kit and caboodle of from Titans to Space Marines to Skitari to everything. It's really, really cool. Twists and turns, intrigue, abundance, uh, just the, a really cool and interesting story that goes along. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and it's a, it's basically a trilogy in one, one omnibus, which is, which is always nice. Uh, I like, I like trilogies. I like novels, series that you can keep reading and building and uh, telling the stories uh, for the people that you like. So if you like a character, keep following along with them, which is what I like. I think that's why I like a lot of the uh, a lot of the the 40k novels because of that ability to do so. So yeah, another another good read. Highly recommend going along with that. Uh, what do we have here? Cult of the War Mason by uh, by C. L. Werner. Um, awesome. I liked it. I liked it a lot. This one deals with. Um, let me just make sure this is the right one. Yeah, it's a it's a, a shrine world that's being uh, that's being protected by uh, the Adeptus Sororitas, and they have them. They find themselves under a um, cult of the War Mason, uh, a, a, a a Gene Stealer cult uprising. So um, it's really fun and interesting. There's a lot of cool action. If you really want to have an understanding of kind of how uh, Gene Stealer cults operate. This is really a good way to go about it. Uh, I think you, you kind of have an idea of, of how they're they um, insinuate themselves into a situation. And there's some other cool twists and turns that you probably won't expect and see, but you'll see them and it'll be interesting. I really like the book, a good read, um, especially if you like sisters, especially if you like Gene Steeler cult. Um, this is a good one to pick up and get an understanding of how to do it with it. And I think it's a standalone book. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's been there. I mean, they may in the future. But as of now, I think it's just a standalone book. So if you're not looking to, for a major investment, you're just looking for something to read right now, that's a pretty good one to go with. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Last Hunt by Robbie McNiven. Uh, this is essentially a uh, a White Scars novel. So it deals with them uh, trying to prep a planet for a Tyranid, uh, Tyranid invasion that's coming to the planet. And they're trying to do their best to try to fight off the Tyranids while also prepping the planet's population to try to survive the oncoming thing and trying to deal with internal political struggles uh, while trying to do what's best to, to save them and it's a really fun and interesting uh, story uh, very action-packed um, very much uh, uh, space marines doing space marine things uh, and doing it in a really good way it's a cool story and it gives you an idea of how the how the if you want an idea of what this what the white scars do because a lot of the novels which is kind of cool is that you get a better idea of what the different characters like because you have a general idea especially if you're a player and you do whatever of what the different chapters are like and what they kind of do but 
getting them, you get a better idea of what they do reading these novels because of, of just the reality of what they what they provide there. So highly recommend this one. I like this one. Uh, there's also some twists and turns in this one. There's always twists and turns because, I mean, if it's not twists and turns, it can get a little boring. But there are twists and turns in this one that are exciting, uh, shall we say. Um, maybe multiple arms. I probably spoiled it, but whatever. You can, you can go from there. Uh, then we've got The Vaults of Terror, Carrier Throne. I, this is the first of two novels that have come out. I read the other one on, or listened to the other one on Audible. Um, I really like it. Um, it's by Chris Wright. Um, I like his stuff. I read one of his Iron Hands novels that he had, which was one of the, it was more bolter porn one than most of the other ones. Uh, but it's still exciting and interesting if that's what you're looking for. But this one is definitely uh, not as well. There are, I mean, there's a bit. There's there is some of the ultra violence that you're going to find in 40k, uh, but it does. Um, it's cool. It's interesting. It follows the main story follows along with an inquisitor and his retinue trying to figure out uh, follow the leads to a, a problem on Terra, which is cool. And I talked about this in the um, in in my novel or my novel <laughs> in my article on Warhammer Community. Um, but it uh, it does um, it does follow along with them trying to find out information of what's going on on Terra, and I think it's a cool uh, a cool book to get into. And there's a second one that comes along. So once you fall in love with the characters, you get to read another one that's going out now. And I'm waiting for the third one that'll eventually come out because I really really enjoyed the characters, really enjoyed the novel, really enjoyed the writing, and enjoyed the story. So it really tells you what's kind of this is a good one to give an idea of what's happening on uh, Terra. Because a lot of the stories are happening in far-flung places, but this actually takes place on Terra, so you get a good idea of what's happening on Terra, which I think is which is fun and interesting way to go about it. So give that one a shot. The Carrion Throne, Vaults of Terra, uh, number one, number two, I think, is the Hollow Mountain, and both are really good. Highly recommended. We've got uh, Enforcer, uh, the the Shira Calpurnia Omnibus by Matthew Matthew Ferrer. Um, this is a good one, and it was an interesting one. It was a very different one. Uh, it was it follows along with an Arbitus, um, a member of the Arbitus, uh, uh, and just kind of the stories that she deals with uh, fighting through the the different uh, things that uh, occur on a planet and dealing with. There's, there's story. There's three books in there. One I think deals with. Um, like rogue traders and there's another one that deals with like an uprising oh man there's a ton of fun and really interesting stuff and it really gets a really good idea of 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 the really gritty underground so like you know in in, in marvel they had marvel knights which dealt with like the boot like the feet the like the dare like daredevil and moon knight it dealt, dealt with a lot of like the grittier uh, stories for superheroes that were not thor that were you know that were definitely not thor that were just like you know that were on the ground, grittier kind of stuff. This really gives you an idea for that because this isn't dealing with, um, you know, this isn't dealing with like massive battles. This isn't dealing with space marine chapters landing. It's not dealing with you know titans coming at you. It's dealing with basically the police of you know the 40k police, the Arbitus, and you get a cool idea of how that operates and how the world, what the world is like. Which is what I like about a lot of these novels is you get a better understanding of what the universe is like what the galaxy is like you get a better taste for uh what's going on and what's occurring without having to worry about with with with, with that you just don't get but just reading stories about space marines you know because space marines are a small portion of 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 the galaxy a small portion of the world that goes on so to see and understand what's happening on most of the other planets when they're not just being consumed by tyranids or when they're not you know uh, just an entire wasteland of battlefield is kind of cool to get a good idea of how society operates which i liked a lot so give that one a shot there uh matthew ferrer it's a interesting book um but yeah i recommend that one these are really high now Let's see what's going on here uh servants of the emperor which one's this one or god's bloody rose steel demon um I think I haven't read this one. Oh yeah, I've read this one. There's a yeah, I, I have read this one. I knew I read it. I just couldn't remember what it was that I was what I read. Uh, so essentially, this is three stories, uh, three uh, you know you know three not, uh, collected novellas into one basically novel length. Here, uh, one deals with um, Adeptus Custodes, which is super interesting. Really liked that one a lot. Um, and I think that was the Orc Gods um, by Nick Kai, maybe. Um, and deals with them dealing with a situation uh, now that they've expanded and left Terra. What kind of goes along with with that? 
and a really interesting and cool story with that. Um, you have the story of the Bloody Rose, um, which is... Oh, yes. Uh, so it, it deals with the this, this squad of sisters that were sent to a planet to go find out what happened because they had previously been on the planet, declared it cleared of uh, like an orc invasion. And another set was sent with the, um, with the Adeptus Mechanicus to go to the planet and revive it and return it. And they lost communications with them. So they sent that sister squad back to go find out what happened and deals with all of that. So good read. Uh, that was an exciting read as well. I really liked that one. Um, and then I think the last one, um, face okay, creatures, nightmares, man. The Adeptus. Which one was that one? I'm trying to read this. Oh yes. Oh yes. Okay. So the last one is is a uh, a besieged city um, that's dealing with a um, a chaos invasion or besieged planet. And it's dealing with a chaos invasion, and it's really cool stories about story about um, this um, Astra Militarum uh, tank crew that are trying to a uh, uh, group of tankers that are trying to deal with a, a chaos invasion where the lines are breaking and the city's falling, and they're just doing their best to try to 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 do whatever they can to try to 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 survive and get back and 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 defend the planet from this invasion. And it deals with the uh, Chaos Space Marines. It's really, really good. Really good. I like them all. I, this is, It's been a little bit since I read this one. So, But I really liked all three stories in here. And I didn't realize that this was the book that had those three stories. I remember those three stories. Didn't realize this is the book. But uh, Service of the Imperium. This is a cool pickup if you're not necessarily want to invest in one particular type of, of reading. Because it has the Sisters of Battle. It's got the, um, the Adeptus Custodes. And it's also got the... Um, Astra Militarum, and it deals with them in a super cool and interesting way. The stories are really good, uh, really good characterization, really good uh, sense of, of what's going on. So I do recommend this one. Um, like I said, it's by Nick Keim, uh, uh, Danny Ware, and Ian St. Martin. Ian St. Martin, I'm a big fan of his stuff. I like a lot of his stories that I read in all of these novels here. But uh, yeah, I would pick it up, um, give it a shot, and and give them... I, I, I do recommend it. I think they're good. I think they're cool stories, and I think you will enjoy them. So... Um, oh, this is one of the new ones, the Space Marine Conquest, Fist of the Imperium. So a lot of the the ones they've been coming out with, they have them for, uh, you know, for, they've got a bunch of different ones. So they've got ones for Imperial Fists, they've got, um, this is the Imperial Fist one, they've got uh, a bunch of different ones. So they've got Apocalypse came out, it's long in the series. Uh, there's another Space Marine, uh, a Dark Angels one that you'll see, the War of Secrets. They've got Ultramarines one uh, that have come out. These are meant to be... Uh, uh, in like how the uh, primary space marines are folded into into the works there, um, and this was I wasn't expecting this when I picked it up. I kind of picked it up because I was like, "All right, that sounds good. I'll read some Imperial Fist, you know, Vulture porn. That sounds good to me." But this turned out to be super interesting, and the uh, the story behind it. Minor spoiler here, I guess maybe if you have if you're like just starting to read and don't want any spoilers. Um, what you don't expect to read about it is, or I mean, it's really early on, and you're dealing you're dealing with uh, with Marines that have been called to a planet that finds itself in the throes of of rebellion. Uh, there is an uprising on the planet, and the Space Marines have come to try to to try to fix it. Even though the planet is the planet's governor and the planet's people don't necessarily think that they necessarily are needed, they can handle this themselves. Um, and it's it's a cool story about how they're trying to fight back against this uprising that they th at first think is chaos because of the, um, the 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 rip in the sky that they see now, but uh, it turns out to be something with a few more arms than that, <laughs> which is super cool and odd. And as much as I said the the cold of the war mason was a cool novel to get an idea of how uh, Gene Steeler cult operate, this book does the best job of really giving you a sense of what the Gene Steeler cult are like. Um, which is surprising. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not advertised as a Gene Steeler cult book. Um, it's, you know, it looks like it's just about the Imperial Fist, which the Imperial Fist spend a, are a big uh, operator in the book. But it's kind of cool to see how they operate when they arrive on a planet 
to try to handle the situation um, and what they do and what goes on with it. And the fights that they also face against, you know, the local governor to try to, to try to do what's right, even though it disrupts daily life with them. So um, this is a really good book. I really like this one a lot. So it's by uh, Andy Clark. Um, and I really, really recommend this one. Um, it gives you a good idea of, of the struggles that the primary of what there is folding Primaris into um, into the chapters and and the struggles that people have with accepting the Primaris or the ones who do accept the Primaris wholeheartedly and it's just a really cool novel and what they're trying to prove themselves really good I really like this one a lot a lot of action a lot of intrigue a lot of um, good storytelling and characterization in this one uh, so I like that one. we got the Eye of Ezekiel uh, this is what I was talking about the Space Marine Battles book. Uh, it's a lot of bolter porn. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, and but that's exciting and it's interesting. I mean, the space marines shooting space marines, uh, doing space marine stuff is really cool. So uh, essentially, it's um, Ezekiel uh, leading the Dark Angels against um, a, an orc invasion on a planet, and it's really interesting, and exciting. Um, Ezekiel's a badass, and this book definitely makes you feel like he's a badass. Um, so it's kind of really, really cool to see him. Uh, develop in this book in this novel so if you're a dark angels fan or an orc fan um or just a, a space marine fan this is a really good book to pick up if you can find it um and just give it a read it's really good i i do recommend it especially if you meet any of those uh things so then we have watches of the throne the emperor's legion uh this is the first of of at least two there's another one that came out too uh they came out with those the two um valerian and uh what's Man, it's Valerian and oh, Alea. Um, so this starts the story. That those characters, the models that came out there, go along with the latest book that's come out. That's really, really good as well. I like them a lot. Uh, this kind of tells the story about um, they're trying to bring back the Sisters of Silence, uh, trying to gather them back after they've been kind of cast around, cast across the uh, the galaxy into hiding after after the Crusades uh, and bringing them back about the the custo the adeptus custos trying to hold the line and trying to deal with the return of gilliman and uh trying to deal with the, the demonic incursion on on terra and all these different things you've got gray knights in it super exciting really interesting um good storytelling good characterization and a good way to get an idea of of what the adeptus custos are like i think you know the emperor's talents are are little understood because they're very different you know um and to read this is also give you a better understanding of what went on with that short story because they know what the orders are they know what they're doing and they they don't question a whole lot of that um and i think that they see themselves as something above and separate from space marines so to have themselves questioned by space marines they're probably not big fans of so uh, i think this is a cool a cool book i really like it and i like the one that came after it i can't remember the name off the top of my head i should have probably looked at it but i, I listened to it on audible and really enjoyed it so um, I do recommend this, and especially if you have an interest. This also takes place on Terra, a lot of it, so you have an idea of what goes on on Terra as well. It gives you an idea of, of, of what's happening there. So uh, I do recommend this. I do a lot. Um, and I also recommend the, the next book that comes along with it. Really cool stories and a good um, good books there. So by Chris Wright, again, a big fan of his stuff. He likes to work with a lot of stuff on, on Terra, I guess, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the War of Secrets was that other, the, uh, the Space Marine Conquest book. Uh, by Chris Ke uh, by by Phil Kelly, um, <clears throat> and uh, the War of Secrets deals with the Dark Angels uh, folding in Primaris Space Marines into the fold uh, of the chapter and dealing with them and their mistrust of them because of their uh, their dedication to Mars that they feel that they have and uh, trying to get through that and feel see how they come together. It's really good. I liked it. I know there are a lot of people that were disappointed with it, um, but I thought it was I thought it was interesting. I thought it was good. A lot of this is if you <clears throat> if you read this with a certain mind canon in place that you don't want to change that you don't want to alter that you think is the way it should be, then you might find yourself disappointed because I don't think that Games Workshop holds themselves to those mind canons. I think that Games Workshop writes stories that they think are interesting and, and writes them in ways that they think fits within what they believe should be the the canon and how it works out. You know, you, you know that they're not going to um, they're they're not going to kill off, you know, the the named characters that have 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 uh, that have bottles out there that they can buy because that hurts their 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 company. And I wouldn't expect them to. I think that this a lot of the stories that they deal with and try to fold it in 
are coming from a place of a company trying to run a company and also coming from a place where it's a company trying to develop a lore that i mean just look at this just look at this pile on my desk this isn't probably a, like a, a fraction of the number of novels and books that have come out in the in the in the black library out there um and even just in all of this there's so much lore that's built up and developed that it becomes hard to you're gonna have times when you're gonna have it rub but if you accept the book for what it is i think you're gonna thoroughly enjoy it if you go into it with a, an axe to grind yeah you'll probably find you'll probably find an axe to grind you know um but if you're looking for entertainment if you're looking for something that's enjoyable and a way to give an, a better understanding of how the how the universe operates i think all of these books are going to do it um i like this i mean i'm a dark angel fan uh, obviously <laughs> i've got that's like my main army there that's what i've been doing for years and i've read all of the other novels all of which i highly recommend gav thorpe is a fantastic writer and his dark angels trilogy was superb and told a really awesome story that was very very lore breaking but in a way that i think was super exciting and fun to do and that's what I like a lot of these is that they 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 kind of take on the canon and they and they and they twist it and they turn it and they change it because if it just stays static, I mean it gets boring. If you're just hearing the same thing over and over again without these twists and turns, uh, like a novel, a straight up novel without a twist and turn is going to be boring. You're not going to want to read it. And I think the same thing happens with the lore is that you know if you try to keep it static, if you're not willing to work with it, if you're not willing to to develop it and change it and move it forward, then it's going to get old and stale and boring. And who's going to want to keep doing that? You know what I mean? So, but I really like this one. I think it's really interesting. And a cool take on trying to fold the the primary space marines into a chapter that is notorious for uh, for questioning and secrecy and uh, and mistrust. So, I, I give this one a read. Especially if you're a Dark Angels fan. Uh, definitely if you're a Dark Angels fan. Probably if you're a Space Marine fan. And almost probably if you're just a Warhammer 40k fan. Uh, it does deal with a lot of, of Dark Angel stuff. It also deals with um, some of the successor chapter, and it does deal with Tau as well. So give it a read. I liked it. I liked it a lot. And then we have, I think last but not least, the books I've got, I've, I've, I've managed to pick up over here. Rogue Trader. It's a um, the omnibus by uh, Andy Hoare. It's fantastic. I liked it. I liked it. I know there's a lot of people that are disappointed with it, but I think it's just kind of cool, and it deals with a rogue trader um, trying to save his his familial legacy and trying to uh, to keep his um, the, the their their rogue traderness going throughout everything and trying to fight with what he should do um, what he ought like all the different stories and it goes with a bunch of different stories with uh, taking part in uh, battles against the Tau against uh, forces of uh, all sorts of different things and it's really interesting to go and read the stories that, that come along with it. Um, so there's some short stories that go along with it, developing with the family there. It's the, uh, what is it? The, um, oh yeah, Lucian Garrett and his family. So it's the, the, the Garrett, uh, rogue trader dynasty, uh, developing there. And it was kind of cool. I liked it a lot because it really, um, it really gave you an idea of what it's like for rogue traders. It really gave a good taste because there was a bunch of different novels that I've had where they, people have interactions with rogue traders and they're just kind of like, very aloof and interesting and to see this have come along was was, was really kind of cool i liked it a lot and i think it'll do i think you would like it i think most anyone would like it um there's big battles there's titans there's space marines there's astra militarum there's all sorts of stuff got tau you've got cults you've got all sorts of different things it's really good i liked it a lot um and uh i i would recommend this one too especially since it's I think it's it's basically just standalone. So, so like this is the omnibus. So it's three novels and I think two short stories, um, but there's, it's not an ongoing series. Uh, so if you want to just pick it up, read it, and get an idea, it is a little bit of a beast. A lot of the omnibuses are, um, but I did enjoy this one indeed. So as you can see, I do have a little bit of a penchant for uh, the Imperium side of things with my novels. Uh, I haven't read a whole lot of. Um, I, I, don't, I don't. I haven't read the only Horus Heresy book that I've had any interactions with was I listened to the audiobook of the first one uh, and I really liked it don't get me wrong but I just never got into it I, I like the idea of 40k I'm just more drawn to 40k uh, I do like space marines but as you can see with all the other stuff I like a lot of the other factions within it um, as well I like hearing about you know Imperial Guard and the Deftus Custodes the um, Arbitus like Inquisition all of them are really good um, and I've, I've also listened to a bunch of stuff on audible too when I'm doing my 
driving. So uh, I also listened to, um, what is it? The one Plague Wars, oh man, with Gilliman. I can't remember. There's, there's basically, there's two books out now. Uh, Dark, uh, Dark Millennium? Dark, Dark Imperium? No. No, Dark Imperium was that one. Um, Dark Millennium? Which one? No. Which one? The newest the newest starter set, uh, with that, whatever it is. Uh, it's basically named that. There's a novel named after the the new the the latest starter set for Warhammer 40k, um, with the Space Marines and the and the and the Death Guard, uh, the Death Guard, uh, and then the second book is Plague War, uh, that Plague War, um, Dark Millennium. I think it's I think it's Dark Millennium. It has to be Dark Millennium. Anyway, it's really good. I like that series too. It really gives you an idea of what it's like with with Gilliman coming back, um, coming back into town and seeing what it's like. His interactions and in trying to lead this crusade and trying to save the Imperium. Uh, and and all that goes along with that, which is really fun and interesting. It's got enough of bolter porn, but also a good way to catch up on the changes and the developments in the lore that have occurred uh, since he's arrived, which has been a big moment of, of shift and change um, which in the lore as well as the game itself. So highly recommend it. So, like I said, I've listened to a lot and I've read a lot. This is, this is not all of the books that I've read in the in the in the uh, Black Library I've read a lot of them and I really enjoy a lot of them um, in fact I really enjoy all of them I don't think I've read a single Black Library book that I didn't enjoy there's some that I enjoy more than others uh, but there are uh, there's not a single one that I haven't actually enjoyed uh, I think that especially if you're looking to get a better understanding of what the world and what the Imperium is like what the 40k universe is um, the, this this is a great way to do it um, I like a lot of the, the stories and the, and the lore that they have in codexes, but these really give you characterization. These really give you a sense of things. Um, that, and that, that, to me, is how I really absorb a lot of what goes on. Um, you know, Just reading that something happens, to me, doesn't really hit me as much as reading about what it's like to be those people when it happens and what it's like for that. Um, and I think it's 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 really interesting and uh, and fun and cool uh, what they what they've done with all of their all of the stories that they've built in the Black Library. So again, highly recommend any of these books. Pick any of them up, uh, start any of them. If you really feel like getting into novel into it, like a whole series, I highly recommend the Gaunt's Ghost series or Kyvis Kane, Kane series. Uh, if you're looking for one-offs, there's plenty of them in there. And there's big omnibuses if you just feel like having a big chunk of book to just sit there and read. Or read at night. That's where most of my reading is, is before I go to sleep, I read a lot of it. Um, and it just keeps me going, and it really builds up in my brain. You know, this is why I'm, I'm, I am I'm have a big penchant for uh, narrative stories and things like that. That's why all my battle reports, even my competitive ones, have a story behind them that I tell and that I build. And that I can build now because of... The, the extent of black library knowledge that I've got pent up inside of my brainstem. So, but I recommend all of it. Uh, and this is, I know this has been a bit of a different book, a uh, different uh, video, but I hope it was helpful. Hope it gives some people ideas of what to do and, and, and maybe we could do something else. Maybe we could do like a, a book club or something like that. I think that would be kind of fun uh, where we could just, you know, read and then we can talk about a specific novel or uh, book or omnibus or whatever at the like once a month or something like that to allow people to catch up with all of it I think it'd be fun let me know if you'd be interested in doing something like that in the comments below but uh, I hope you guys have all enjoyed this I certainly have let me know what your favorite black library novels are down in the comments below and we'll uh, go for there maybe you can help other people know some of the stuff like I said I don't have as much experience with uh, the non uh, <laughs> with the non-imperium stuff that's really where I find myself drawn to as you can see most of my uh, most of my armies are Imperium, except for, you know, a little bit of, of, of or a whole lot of Gene Steeler Cult. But then I've got a couple novels here for Gene Steeler Cult that I'm, I've been reading about. But uh, let me know down below, and so that's some of the others. So if you're looking for something that's not necessarily, uh, not necessarily Imperium bent, then you can look down below and you can get some recommendations. I heard, I heard Black Legion by Aaron Dembski Bowden is supposed to be fantastic. Uh, so maybe give that a shot as well. So... I hope you guys have all enjoyed this. I certainly have. And until next time, have fun.